Hi and welcome to State of Mind with me Dr. Sham Bhatt. This is the podcast about the new Indian mind, about how globalization, technology and a fast changing society is affecting us, our minds. And how we can use insights from both western and eastern psychology to lead a happier and more fulfilling life. So I got a few emails asking me uh, about my work as a psychiatrist and asking me what i learn from the people that i treat and the work that i do as a psychiatrist i think of course i'm i feel very very privileged to be a psychiatrist and i do learn so much about the human condition i feel really privileged that i'm i'm in a space where i can work directly with people where they feel that they can trust me enough to share their their stories and that i get to be a part of the process of seeing them recover change and find their greatest strength and resilience and by the way the most courageous people i meet are people who actually seek my help you might think that's strange you because i know many people think of uh you know people who need psychiatrist help as being weak but it's quite the contrary especially in our country in our country people don't come to a psychologist or a psychiatrist until you know uh, and this is unfortunate i wish this changes but they don't usually come until having suffered for a long time on their own so what i see is a human being who has extraord- extraordinary strength and courage that in this society they make the uh, determination that they don't mind seeking expert help and getting better and many of them have gone through such stress in their lives such difficult episodes and the way they surmount those challenges is always inspiring to me so every day that i work i learn a lot I I am thankful for my own life I, and I am thankful for this um you know opportunity to work with people. Now of course ev- every case teaches you different things and I think we always learn a lot about reality about the world and 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 the mind from when the uh, the mind is challenged. So in that f- context let me share this case the story um of a case a person I treated several years ago. and again let me reiterate that any case details i ch- I, i share uh, i've changed the details to protect identity and have taken permission when necessary so many years ago i saw a young lady she was uh, in her mid 20s she was a student when suddenly she experienced a breakdown of some kind her parents said they they brought her in for consultation and apparently she had been doing fine everything was fine until one day the family noticed that she was extremely withdrawn from them she wasn't talking with them and one day when her mother came to give her um a cup of tea she knocked the cup of tea you know from her mother's hand and attempted to um run away from the house and she was screaming and she was in extreme terror and and she was really frightened so um you know i spent obviously when we first see somebody we have to understand what is happening currently and also get a an idea of the history you know what has happened over time and psychiatric diagnoses are made by the way primarily by talking to somebody and by listening um we don't have diagnostic tests we don't have an mri scan that can diagnose a psychiatric disorder um we do use mri scans but that's to rule out for example a brain condition a brain disorder that might be causing a a change in mood or behavior but as such we don't have diagnostic tests and so the way we diagnose and we understand somebody is in a way by the oldest technique in the world which is paying attention listening empathy and trying to understand how the the story fits in with observed symptoms um you know with symptoms that we know go together to form a disorder uh so in this particular case what was striking was she said to me uh after you know after a while after she calmed down she was uh, given some medicine for the anxiety to settle down and then she was able to speak and she said that about a month ago she said her parents had been replaced by identical doubles she said my father is not my father my mother is not my mother i sh- uh, sh- she said she acknowledged that they look the same she said yes i know my father looks exactly the way he always did my mother looks the same way that she always did which is why everybody believes that they are my parents but i know the truth that he is not my father she is not my mother and some somebody 
some power she wouldn't name who she thought it was some power has changed taken the soul out of them and replaced them with somebody else now this particular what she said about her parents being somebody else is a known disorder it's a it's called capgra syndrome c a p g r a s capgra syndrome named after the french psychiatrist um joseph capgra i believe who uh, wrote a paper about about a case like this uh, in the 18th uh, mid 1800s initially uh, people thought that there was a psychological explanation for this meaning that a person had some deeply held conflict or um you know a deeply held uh, um sort of uh, negative feeling about their parents or loved ones and because they couldn't express it this came across came forth in in this strange way um we'll talk about causation and why it happens uh, in a moment but just consider the frightening experience for her and for uh people who experience this now it is a rare it's not a very common symptom but it is seen in conditions like um brain um disorders for example after a stroke it's seen in also in conditions like schizophrenia which is a which is a fairly severe mental illness by the way there's a lot of misconception about what schizophrenia is, is as well schizophrenia does not mean having a split personality it does not mean multiple personality it is a serious condition that affects the way people process reality uh, people lose touch with reality and this particular symptom capgras syndrome is seen in schizophrenia so just consider how frightening it was for her to look at those who she thought were her parents until yesterday and suddenly she feels that they are not her parents and remember that when a person has this experience it is not an imagined experience they can't you can't argue them out of this belief it feels real now why does it happen well nobody really understands why it happens but in recent years we certainly uh, know enough about the brain to know that capgras syndrome is not the result of some psychological problem but because of a problem in the way the brain is operating and processing visual signals have you ever for example met somebody after a very long time and you just look at them and it takes you a moment to sort of place them you know you look at them and there's a split second and then you realize who it is well if you consider what happens first your brain recognizes the face the face that you see your brain recognizes the pattern and says that this face looks like my mother or my friend but then there's another part of the brain that lends memories to that face that lends history to that face that that lends all the feelings you associate with that face and that is so important that unless you feel that you do not recognize the person now the neurologist vs ramachandran who is originally from india but now based in california and a, a very accomplished neurologist you might have read some of his books including uh, phantoms in the mind um he and his co-workers found a very interesting phenomenon they found that capgras syndrome happened only visually but not over the phone so if the patient was looking at his uh, mother he would say this is not my mother she has been replaced by an identical double but if he spoke to her on the phone he would acknowledge that this is his mother So what they theorized and this I think rings true uh, when you think about uh, your own experience when you recognize faces what they theorized was that there's a faulty connection between the part of the brain that processes the visual uh, stimulus which is the face and the emotional aspects so the frontal frontotemporal lobe as it is called called of the cerebral cortex sees the face and then sends signals down to the limbic system where the emotions the memories come forth and are associated with that face and if uh, if there's any disconnection between those two areas of the brain or any problem in those pathways then uh, or even in the processing of those areas of the brain then capgras syndrome can uh, can result 
So fortunately, in this case, she responded to treatment and treatment in this case almost always needs medications uh, in addition, of course, to psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is also always important. I must underline that for especially for some of my colleagues who see schizophrenia as purely a biological illness and cannot see the role of psychotherapy. Well, there's no doubt psychotherapy and um, talking, counseling helps um, every almost every situation. But in schizophrenia, it's a, it's a biological dysfunction as well and medications are necessary. So fortunately, she did recover. She, uh, the delusions went away uh, and she was able to return to her family and she did much better with treatment. But it was obviously an extremely uh, frightening, uh, um, and frightening event for her. And also, I think when you, when you hear about this, when you, um, you know, learn about these cases, if you will, about people who've gone through this, you can have one or of two approaches broadly. One is you can see this as the other, you know, people who are not at all like me. And so I'm listening to this story as if they are oddities or curiosities. Or you can understand that we can learn something from everybody's story. That what is happening to these human beings will teach us something about life and about ourselves as well. Firstly, of course, there's no I and the other when it comes to mental health. I just, by the way, I just want to clarify that there really isn't. In a recent uh, study by the CDC, uh, the Centers for Disease Control in the US, they found that only 17% of adults are, ment are optimally mentally healthy at any given time. Only 17% of adults are at optimal uh, levels of mental functioning at any given time. So there is no I and the other. We're all on the continuum in some ways. But here's what we can learn that perhaps what Capra syndrome is telling us is that we are hardwired in relationships to go beyond the, the external that ultimately it is what we feel for the other, the memories we share, the history that we have that, that gives us a sense of familiarity and also is the reason we fall in love, we have relationships, that it is the internal that really gives meaning to the relationships. We are hardwired to actually looking beyond the external. I think that is good news. I mean, if only one part of the brain was doing both the internal and external, it would be a bit different, but I'm actually, you know, it's it's quite um, reaffirming uh, to know that the human uh, human species is conditioned this way. So yes, uh, today's world accentuates the external. Uh, there's no doubt about it, right? There's no doubt about it. Social media, movies, glamour, the cult of celebrity, all of this uh, rather emphasizes the external. But um, we're hardwired to also to, to appreciate and to really want the internal aspects. So that is really reaffirming. Now, there is something that's a little bit opposite, uh, uh, similar to, but kind of diametrically opposite to Capra syndrome. It's called Frigoli syndrome, F-R-E-G-O-L-I. Uh, and in this syndrome, people believe that the same person takes on different forms. So they might say, for example, my father... Has, is now this, per, this, this, this uh, doctor and then he's this friend and then he's this person on the road. So they feel that this person can change their disguise uh, I mean, and basically get into different people's bodies. And this syndrome is named after the a famous, apparently a famous European actor, Leopoldo Frigoli, who was known for his rapid costume changes so he, in plays. So he would keep looking like somebody else. So Frigoli syndrome, also a similar um, d brain dysfunction results in Frigoli syndrome. And again, I think um, tells us that the way we understand the world is far more complex than we actually perceive, right? That's the other insight we get from this. That right now, as you're looking out, you think that, wow, this is one unified experience. But in actual fact, your reality is being constructed by bits, your eye is giving some information, different parts of the brain is collating and putting in different information. And so the reality we are experiencing is a construction. It's not that we are looking out at a reality that exists, rather it is that our brain is actively engaged in the creation of our reality. 
I think that's a profound insight and it also resonates with the ancient Indian idea that all of reality is maya, an illusion. Well, I'll leave it here this week, but in the next week's podcast, I'm going to explore maya a bit more, the concept of maya from the perspective of Western as well as Eastern psychology. So have a wonderful week and I'll see you back for the next State of Mind. Thank you.